Do you think your chances of getting on this show is gonna go up? Hell bloody yeah it is. This video tells you exactly what's in the Survivor Fitness Test, as well as strategies and tangible things you can do to improve your chances of getting on the show, and why it's essential that you have to do your best and not just finish the test. So the real question is, are you fit enough to get on Survivor? And it's not about, are you actually fit enough when it comes to the fitness test that you have to do it. So to get started, before I give you some awesome strategies and how to give yourself a competitive advantage when you're in that audition process and you get to the fitness part, I'm gonna tell you exactly what is in the fitness test. So you can start now preparing so you can shine when you actually get to that stage. So I'm only gonna go through what the actual test is very quickly because it's very simple. There's six aspects to it according to an article that's been released. It may have changed a little bit since I went on, but in this article, it specifies there is a walk-run endurance. You either have to be walking or running for 1.6 kilometers in under 20 minutes. Number two is a push-up test, 10 knee push-ups in one minute. Third one is a squat test and all you have to do is bend down so that your knees are in line with your hips. Number four is a weightlifting test to so lift up 10 kilos from the ground up to their shoulders and back down again safe. Number five is the weight carry test, carry 10 kilos for a 20 meter distance. Finally, number six is general mobility, lie down on the ground and be able to fully stand up by yourself. So as you can tell, they're really easy, super simple fitness stuff. You do not need to be fit. You basically need to be a person who can walk around the block. So the standard of actually being fit enough is not that high to a certain extent production, ensuring that you are fit enough, but also fulfilling their legal requirements to make sure you're not just gonna collapse. But the real strategy of it all is, is that this is their tangible measurement to see if you are what you say you are, because you claim all sorts of things in your application, right? You can do this, you've been to this gym, you exercise this often, but they're gonna be able to tell when you go to that fitness test. So I've found a statement from Peter Newman, the head of non-scripted content for Endemol Shine from my season. He was the executive producer. He's now the CEO of Endemol Shine. He is the big dog. He makes the decisions and he made the following statement about the fitness test. It is to make sure they're physically healthy and fit enough to take part in challenges and the overall physicality of being on the island for 55 days. If that last part of the sentence doesn't give you a hint, it damn well should because being overall physically capable enough to live on an island for 55 days is more than what they have in that test. So if it's harder than what's in the test, they're obviously using the test for something else. As mentioned in what the actual tests are, there are limitations and expectations to what you have to do to be able to pass. So whether it's walking 20 meters, completing it in 20 minutes, there is some basic standard which the average person should definitely be able to finish. So the completion time, they'll tell you that it's not important, you just need to finish and all they care about is just finishing. But that is total bullshit because this is the only tangible measurement that production actually sees. The fitness instructor does not just tick a box saying, yes, they did well, yes, they did this, yes, they did that. No, they write down how long it took you to run that 1.6 kilometers. And then they compare that to what all the other contestants did. So when you're doing it, don't fall into that trap of, oh, I'm just gonna finish, I'm gonna walk it because I know I can do it in 10 minutes. If you can run 100 meters in 15 seconds instead of the two minutes that they give you, do it. Do it, show what your capacity is, show what you're capable of, because this test, although they say that it's just, oh, just finish it, it is overall gonna choose where your positioning is at. This is a tangible measurement, which they will use to decide what tribe you go in. Are you gonna be a challenge beast? They need somebody who's really good at puzzles. Yes, the fitness test doesn't involve puzzles, but if you're a challenge beast who can run 100 meters in 11 seconds, and you can complete puzzles, do you think your chances of getting on this show is gonna go up? Hell bloody yeah it is. But at the same time, if you're not a challenge base, that's totally fine too. If you cannot run 
that fast, then walk it and make sure you do finish it. Because if you don't finish it, you're guaranteed not to get on. Personally, in my audition, I was very fit at the time, but I was not elite. But I was going to the gym six times a week. I was really building myself up. So I knew that I was a strong enough competitor that it wasn't boring to watch. When I got to the run section, of the 1.5 Ks. Yes, I had to walk some of it. I wasn't able at the time to fully sprint that whole time. But what I would do is run for a little bit, walk for a little bit, run for a little bit, walk for a little bit. I would put in strategic actions as if I was actually playing a game or a sport into how I completed the test. A lot of the test aspects are just simply lifting or simply walking. But I definitely suggest getting that upper arm strength for any push-ups that are required because that will be in there and also things to do with running. There is a lot of running on Survivor, so they want to make sure that you can make it to the challenge and back and hopefully do something else. Let me give you an example from my season. Andrew could not really run, could not really throw a ball to save his life. Sorry, Andrew, but you know it's the truth. And then Lee, professional cricket player, could run, could lift everything, could throw with insanely good accuracy. They would both have very different fitness results in this test if they did what they were actually capable of. The combination of people in each tribe, you would have noticed there were strong people in some tribe, not so strong in this tribe, but there was no, this is the brawn, this is the brains. And we've seen them do it like that in the US season, but only once as tribes. So generally speaking, the tribes are actually sorted out into a mixed bag of people of different strengths, different strategic strengths, different fitness strengths. And that's where you see the good competition because at the end of the day, they are making a show and they want those competitions to be as tight as possible or the possibility of one team being behind it and then the other team smashing through like what Aganoa did in that fire challenge. We were absolutely sucking and then we came back with all our strength. Whatever you do, when you're doing that fitness test, when you get to that part of the audition process, go all out. Make sure that you've utilized the knowledge I've given you today of what the test actually is and make sure that you stand out. If you've applied, start training now because people get sick of being sent to tribal council because you suck in challenges. The biggest takeaway from today's video is that it's not if you are fit enough. It's what type of fitness and challenge capability you are going to bring to the game as a player. So make sure when you're in that fitness audition, do your best, show what you're capable of and position yourself as the player you are going to be. So if you want that edge in getting on Survivor, head down to the description below and request a personalized video from me and I will create you one with customized tips.